Creatures live in dependence on the bones, feeding on the bones. And creatures live in dependence on the marrow, feeding on the marrow. And there they are born, grow old and die, evacuate, and make water. And the body is their maternity home, their hospital, their charnel ground, their privy and their urinal. The body can also be brought to death with the upsetting of these worms. And just as it is shared with the eighty families of worms, so too it is shared by the several hundred internal diseases, as well as by such external causes of death as snakes, scorpions, and what not. Section 26. And just as when a target is set up at a crossroads and then arrows, spears, pikes, stones, etc., come from all directions and fall upon it, so too all kinds of accidents befall the body, and it also comes to death through these accidents befalling it. Hence the Blessed One said, Here, Bikis, when day is departing and night is drawing on, a bhikkhu considers thus. In many ways I can risk death. A snake may bite me, or a scorpion may sting me, or a centipede may sting me. I might die of that, and that would set me back. Or I might stumble and fall, or the food I have eaten might disagree with me, or my bile might get upset, or my phlegm might get upset. And sever my joints as it were. Like knives. I might die of that, and that would set me back. A3306. Dot. That is how death should be recollected as to sharing the body with many. Section 27. 5. As to the frailty of life. This life is impotent and frail. For the life of beings is bound up with breathing, it is bound up with the postures, it is bound up with cold and heat, it is bound up with the primary elements, and it is bound up with nutriment. Section 28. Life occurs only when the in-breaths and out-breaths occur evenly. But when the wind in the nostrils that has gone outside does not go in again, or when that which has gone inside does not come out again, then a man is reckoned to be dead. And it occurs only when the four postures are found occurring evenly. But with the prevailing of any one of them the life process is interrupted. And it occurs only when cold and heat are found occurring evenly. But it fails when a man is overcome by excessive cold or heat. And it occurs only when the four primary elements are found occurring evenly. But with the disturbance of the earth element even a strong man's life can be terminated if his body becomes rigid. Or with the disturbance of one of the elements beginning with water if his body becomes flaccid and petrified with a flux of the bowels, etc. Or if he is consumed by a bad fever, or if he suffers a severing of his limb joint ligatures. CF. 11. Closing parenthesis. Dot. And life occurs only in one who gets physical nutriment at the proper time. But if he gets none, he he uses his life up. This is how death should be recollected as to the frailty of life. Section 29. 6. As signless. As indefinable. The meaning is that it is unpredictable. For in the case of all beings, the span, the sickness, and the time, and where the body will be laid, the destiny. The living world can never know ten these things. There is no sign foretells when they will be. Section 30. Herein, firstly the span has no sign because there is no definition such as just so much must be lived, no more than that. For beings die in the various stages of the embryo, namely, comma, at the time of the Kalala, of the Abuddha, of the Pasi, of the Ghana, at one month gone, two months gone, three months gone, four months gone, five months gone, ten months gone, and on the occasion of coming out of the womb. And after that they die this side or the other of the century. Section 31. And the sickness has no sign because there is no definition such as beings die only of this sickness, not of any other. For beings die of eye disease or of any one among those beginning with ear disease. See a 5110. Dot. Section 32. And the time has no sign because there is no definition such as One has to die only at this time, not at any other. 
for beings die in the morning and at any of the other times such as noon. Section 33. And where the body will be laid down has no sign because there is no definition such as when people die, they must drop their bodies only here, not anywhere else. For the person of those born inside a village is dropped outside the village, and that of those born outside the village is dropped inside it. Likewise that of those born in water is dropped on land, and that of those born on land in water. And this can be multiplied in many ways. Section 34. And the destiny has no sign because there is no definition such as one who dies there must be reborn here. For there are some who die in a divine world and are reborn in the human world, and there are some who die in the human world and are reborn in a divine world, and so on. And in this way the world goes round and round the five kinds of destinies like an ox harness to a machine. This is how death should be recollected as signless. Section 35. 7. As to the limitedness of the extent. The extent of human life is short now. One who lives long lives a hundred years, more or less. Hence the Blessed One said, Bicus, this human lifespan is short. There is a new life to be gone, there are profitable deeds to be done, there is the life of purity to be led. There is no not dying for the born. He who lives long lives a hundred years, more or less. The life of humankind is short. A wise man holds it in contempt, and acts as one whose head is burning. Death will never fail to come. SI 108. Dot. And he said further, Bicus, there was once a teacher called Araka. A 4136. All of which Sutta should be given in full, adorned as it is with seven similes. Section 36. And he said further, Bicus. When a bhikkhu develops mindfulness of death thus, Oh! Let me live a night and day that I may attend to the Blessed One's teaching. Surely much could be done by me. And when a bhikkhu develops mindfulness of death thus, Oh! Let me live a day that I may attend to the Blessed One's teaching. Surely much could be done by me. And when a bhikkhu develops mindfulness of death thus, Oh! Let me live as long as it takes to chew and swallow four or five mouthfuls that I may attend to the Blessed One's teaching. Surely much could be done by me. These are called bhikkhus who dwell in negligence and slackly develop mindfulness of death for the destruction of cankers. Section 37. And. Bhikkhus. When a bhikkhu develops mindfulness of death thus. Oh. Let me live for as long as it takes to chew and swallow a single mouthful that I may attend to the Blessed One's teaching. Surely much could be done by me. And when a bhikkhu develops mindfulness of death thus. Oh. Let me live as long as it takes to breathe in and breathe out. Or as long as it takes to breathe out and breathe in. That I may attend to the Blessed One's teaching. Surely much could be done by me. These are called bhikkhus who dwell in diligence and keenly develop mindfulness of death for the destruction of cankers. A3-3056. Dot. Section 38. So short in fact is the extent of life that it is not certain even for as long as it takes to chew and swallow four or five mouthfuls. This is how death should be recollected as to the limitedness of the extent. Section 39. 8. As to the shortness of the moment. In the ultimate sense the life moment of living beings is extremely short being only as much as the occurrence of a single conscious moment. Just as a chariot wheel, when it is rolling, rolls. That is touches the ground. Only on one point of the circumference of its tire, and, when it is at rest, rests only on one point, so too, the life of living beings lasts only for a single conscious moment. When that consciousness has ceased, the being is said to have ceased, according as it is said. In a past conscious moment he did live, not he does live, not he will live. In a future conscious moment not he did live, not he does live, he will live. In the present conscious moment not he did live, he does live, not he will live. Single quote.
life person, pleasure, pain, just these alone join in one conscious moment that flicks by. Ceased aggregates of those dead or alive are all alike, gone never to return. No. World is. Born if. Consciousness is. Not produced. When that is present, then it lives. When consciousness dissolves, the world is dead. The highest sense this concept will allow, 11. Nid I 42. Dot. This is how death should be recollected as to the shortness of the moment. Opening square bracket. Conclusion. Section 40. So while he does his recollecting by means of one or other of these eight ways, his consciousness acquires the support of repetition owing to the reiterated attention, mindfulness settles down with death as its object, the hindrances are suppressed, and the jhana factors make their appearance. But since the object is stated with individual essences, and since it awakens a sense of urgency, the jhana does not reach absorption in his only access. Now, with special development, the supramundane jhana and the second and the fourth immaterial jhanas reach absorption even with respect to states with individual essences. For the supramundane reaches absorption by means of progressive development of the purification and the immaterial jhanas do so by means of development consisting in the surmounting of the object. CCH. X. Since there. In those two immaterial jhanas. There is merely the surmounting of the object of jhana that had already reached absorption. But here. In mundane mindfulness of death. There is neither so the jhana only reaches access. And that access is known as mindfulness of death too since it arises through its means. Section 41. A bhikkhu devoted to mindfulness of death is constantly diligent. He acquires perception of disenchantment with all kinds of becoming. Existence. Dot. He conquers attachment to life. He condemns evil. He avoids much storing. He has no stain of avarice about requisites. Perception of impermanence grows in him, following upon which there appear the perceptions of pain and not self. But while beings who have not developed mindfulness of death fall victims to fear, horror and confusion at the time of death as though suddenly seized by wild beasts, spirits, snakes, robbers or murderers, he dies undeluded and fearless without falling into any such state. And if he does not attain the deathless here and now, he is at least headed for a happy destiny on the breakup of the body. Now, when a man is truly wise, his constant task will surely be this recollection about death blessed with such mighty potency. This is the section dealing with the recollection of death in the detailed explanation. Opening square bracket. Mindfulness occupied with the body. Section 42. Now comes the description of the development of mindfulness occupied with the body as a meditation subject, which is never promulgated except after an enlightened one's arising, and is outside the province of any sectarians. It has been commended by the Blessed One in various ways in different suttas thus. Bikis. When one thing is developed and repeatedly practiced, it leads to a supreme sense of urgency, to supreme benefit to supreme surcease of bondage, to supreme mindfulness and full awareness, to acquisition of knowledge and vision, to a happy life here and now, to realization of the fruit of clear vision and deliverance. What is that one thing? It is mindfulness occupied with the body. AI 43. Dot. And thus, because they savor the deathless who savor mindfulness occupied with the body. They do not savor the deathless who do not savor mindfulness occupied with the body. They have savored the deathless who have savored mindfulness occupied with the body. They have not savored. They have neglected, they have not neglected. They have missed, they have found the deathless who have found mindfulness occupied with the body. AI 45. Dot. And it has been described in 14 sections in the passage beginning, and how developed Bikus, how repeatedly practiced is mindfulness occupied with the body of great fruit, to great benefit. Here, Bikus, a bhikkhu, gone to the forest. Opening parenthesis. M389. Comma. That is to say, 
the sections on breathing, on postures, on the four kinds of full awareness, on attention directed to repulsiveness, on attention directed to elements, and on the nine charnel ground contemplations. Section 43 Herein, the three, that is to say, the sections on postures, on the four kinds of full awareness. CMAI 253F. Closing parenthesis. And on attention directed to elements, as they are stated. In that sutta. Deal with insight. Then the nine sections on the charnel ground contemplations, as stated there, deal with that particular phase of insight knowledge called contemplation of danger and any development of concentration in the bloated, etc. That might be implied there has already been explained in the description of foulness. Ch. Vi. Dot. So there are only the two, that is, the sections on breathing and on directing attention to repulsiveness, that, as stated there, deal with concentration. Of these two, the section on breathing is a separate meditation subject, namely, mindfulness of breathing. Opening square bracket. Text. Section 44. What is intended here as mindfulness occupied with the body is the 32 aspects. This meditation subject is taught as the direction of attention to repulsiveness thus. Again, Bikis, a bhikkhu reviews this body, up from the soles of the feet and down from the top of the hair and contained in the skin, as full of many kinds of filth thus. In this body there are head hairs body hairs, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinews, bones, bone marrow, kidney, heart, liver, midriff, spleen, lungs, bowels, entrails, gorge, dung, bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat, tears, grease, spittle, snot, oil of the joints, and urine.